Hello and welcome back to Disco Elysium. Last time we spoke to Everard Clare. He gave us a key uh, to open the weasel's apartment. And now we also got the body down from the tree because we talked to Measurehead afterwards. So what do we do next? We have a bunch of options. But to be honest, I think the one I want to go for first is neither the body nor the weasel. I think first I want to go to, uh, to the uh, bookstore. And then we might go talk to the negotiator. I think that's the order in which I'm gonna do that and then we, we're we gonna interact with the body and maybe, be maybe before that we can break into the house. We'll see. Um, okay, so first we spoke to Annette, I think. Let's talk to you real quick. <laughs> you see a sturdy woman humming to herself. She seems to be browsing books. A good one? Yes. Hello? She nods, her attention fully focused on reading. Uh, who are you? Me? <clears throat> no one. I'm just a working class woman. She doesn't really want to be disturbed that much. What are you doing? Looking for something to read. Uh, she reverts her attention to a worn-out paperback. A phenomenal, good good, or I'm a policeman, I'm a policeman. I know you are. Everyone can see that. The rectangles. Uh, good then. Uh, do you need the help of a policeman? Uh, do you need the help? What with? Uh, she tries hard to focus on the book stand. Um, let's watch her browse books first. Her hands move over the book covers. The tips of her fingers look rough, stained with yellow. It seems like she has spent a lot of time at work, smoking. An array of neurons fire up with joy. Bum her a cigarette, lest it turn to pain. Uh, do you smoke? No, I don't. Uh, I know for a fact that you smoke. Alright, got it, thanks. Uh, I know for a fact that you smoke. Why do you think that I smoke? She looks up, slightly startled. It's the kind of place where everyone does. I suspect I may possess supernatural abilities. Your hands look like they belong to a heavy smoker. Um, you know what, let's just go with the deduction here. Yeah? It's not like yours look much better. Um, take a look at the hands. She is right. Your hands look even worse than hers. With tiny cuts and gushes covering your skin like a spider web. Your fingertips have become an ugly shade of brown. Just give me a cigarette, please. I already told you, I don't have any. Go bother someone else. She's lying. She's goddamn lying. She has smokes. Oh, Half-Light, you are pushing me down an unhealthy direction. Um, just give me your cigarettes, okay? Don't lie. Sorry, officer. She stares at you in disbelief. Uh... Okay, fine. Uh, do you know where I could get a new pack? From the kiosk? There's one near the harbor. It's a uh, frita. You can look it up. Okay, thanks. No problem. She sighs. Uh, maybe your husband is missing? My husband? No, he's not. Uh, so where could he be? I don't know. At home now? Out drinking with his friends? Working? Where is this going, officer? So, what I'm hearing is you don't really know where your husband is. Uh, right, got it, thanks. Uh, so, you don't really know. Yes, but... I don't really need to know where my husband is. Not all the time. Wouldn't you like to? No. She looks you straight in the eye. Her right foot is tapping nervously. Uh, I can totally help you find your missing husband. Uh, suit yourself then, I don't really care if your husband is missing. Well, that's a mean thing to say, so maybe we're gonna go for that. Uh, maybe you're right, maybe he isn't missing indeed. Let's go with the second one. Why are we still talking about this? I haven't lost my husband. She has though. The husband is totally lost. You should tell her that it's okay. No, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna say, hush baby. What? It's all, uh, it's all right to not know where your husband is. Nothing shameful in that. No, I was, I was talking to myself. I should hush. I'm a baby. Uh, I'm gonna go with the first one. Who said anything about shame? Stop talking down to me. My husband is not missing. But he is. You can feel it. Or maybe it's something else then. Maybe your children are missing? No, absolutely not. 
Her words come out quick as a gunshot. Uh, okay, so where are they? Are you a policeman or a nanny? She's definitely disturbed by now. Uh, nanny, uh, nanny, where are they? Uh, I, uh, I police where, uh, whatever I want. Where are they? <clears throat> Let's go with the first one. They are not missing, sir. You know where they are. They're at home, smoking. Giving the ladder of vices a chance. They're at home, right? Smoking cigarettes. What? That's just... My daughters are perfectly fine. They're with their friends down in Jamrock. There's nothing to worry about. They're almost grown up now, anyway. They're past the age they need me protecting them from everything now. I'm afraid the danger is now greater than ever. Tell me, how old are they? Uh, maybe you're right. Maybe they aren't missing after all. Tell me something else. Uh, let's go with the first one. My youngest girl, Jolie, is just shy of 16. Jenny, she is turning 18 next month. But we shouldn't even be talking about them. Uh, and can you describe me their appearance? Any features that stand out? Something to make identifying a little easier? Why do you need to know this? Haven't I repeatedly told you that they are not missing? That they're in Jamrock, safe and well, at some stupid party. Did someone say party? You could use a party. Hunt it down. I could do with a party, a killer party, not a lame or one. Uh, it's for, invest uh, for the investigation, I'm trying to be professional. You're right, let's not talk about your daughters. I don't know what got into me. Let's go with the first one, electrochemistry. You have steered me wrong in the past, and you will do it again. A killer party? What is it with you and Pope Staples? My god, please no more talk about my daughters. They are fine. She picks up a book and tries to concentrate. A flock of seabirds passes by. And maybe your cockatoo is missing? I don't mean to disrespect, sir, but you are being a bit of a cockatoo here. For what it's worth, I agree. But cockatoos can't be stopped when they get ladies. It's better to indulge him at this point. Ma'am, I was asking about your cockatoo. Is it missing? Uh, what do you mean I'm being a cockatoo? Oh, that's a bit more confrontational. Let's go with that. Nothing. Go read up on them if you're so interested. There's a great book in the bookstore. Maybe you should. What if the cockatoo is your astral captain? Or your heraldic bird? Actually, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Thanks for the tip. Wonderful. The store is open. Um... Okay, that's all for the moment. I'll let you read. The woman before you nods and returns to her reading. What's that? Uh, it takes willpower to even read the author's name. Uh, Jan Kaus from Egonia. Egonia? I don't know. I don't know what language that is based on. I mean, Jan Kaus sounds German, but it could be a different language as well that just has similar names. Could be something... Could be something Scandinavian, maybe? Hard to say. Uh, okay, let's first, mm, let's first take a look around. Uh, what do we have here? The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Nearly all the titles contain the word Hyundar somewhere. Storekeep, tell me about the Muscle Man books. Oh, Man from Hyundar, a very popular series of adventure novels. They're awfully immoral and violent books. Why are they so popular? Blood and violence, scantily clad women, epic narratives, all those mystical <clears throat> things he encounters. They're bound to grab those with little imagination and nothing to do. Sounds good. Which one should I start with? What does it matter? They're all the same. However, the customer is always right, they say. If you're a novice of the series, I'd recommend Hjelm Dallerman, the man from Hjelmdal. It's supposed to be a good introduction to the series. Let's look through the display of books first. Rows and rows of Hiem Dalamen blur your vision. You make out some titles. Man from Hiemdal and the Mammoth Riders. Man from Hiemdal, Return to Hiemdal. And the Solipsistic, Man from Hiemdal and the Hiemdal Man. Good God, how many are there? Maybe a hundred. Man from Hyomdal and the Sages at the End of the World. Man from Hyomdal and the False God. Man from Hyomdal and the Scorched Earth. Man from Hyomdal, the Hyomdal Colonies. Man from Hyomdal and the Swamp Beast. 
Man from Yeomdal and the Snow Crabs. Man Lenval Brown, the, the name of the narrator, uh, he has said Hjelmdal more often than any human being should, and I respect that. <laughs> I, I respect him for that. Those snow crabs are worse than they sound. Uh, is that all? Not even close. Man from Hjelmdal in hell. Man from Hjelmdal and the forest of slaves. Man from Hjelmdal under the lake. Man from Hjelmdal. Hjelmdal burning. There's even the trial of death. A pastoral combat game book set in the world of Yeomdalaman, and so much more. Okay, pain threshold, 72%. We can give that a shot. The twinge there we go. in the back of your head makes you flinch. Your eye starts twitching. Ow! Your hand reaches toward a book with glossy cover art of the very muscular man from Yeomdal in chains, kneeling in front of a staircase leading to a throne. A woman sits on the throne, leering at the man. She's laughing at him, belittling him. Between the throne and the Hyamdala man lies a bonfire, casting shadows on the wall. The shadow of the woman's headdress looks like a pair of devil horns. The title reads, Man from Hyamdala and the Devil Woman. Hmm, aren't all women devil women? Especially those leering types who seem to wear nothing but an armored bikini. There's also some sort of a snake lizard beast slithering around her abdomen, chest, shoulder region. The display rack before you is burdened under piles of Man from Hyamdal novels. Okay, okay, okay. So we could get some of those. Uh, do I want to get one right now or do I want to save the money? We might get some money later from uh, the negotiator. Um, I'm gonna wait for now. I'm gonna wait until I have paid off my uh, my debt for for you know for tonight's stay in the room. Um, gift books and molten candy. Let's take a look at this here. This bubble. Anything of interest? Old sports magazines tucked away in a dark corner. Let's go for this one. A small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by Viral related merchandise. Let's look through the pile of Viral related items. An endless variety of source books, lore books, and codices litter the table. The topmost book is titled Welkin Compendium, second edition. There's also a large hardbound tome with intricate cover art, The Hunters of Catawack, Boreal Creature Compendium, and a Pick Your Path adventure game book titled Tales of Wirral, Cavern of Velcrag. Anything that really catches my eye? There's a box that says Wirral, third edition <laughs> mega setting supplements module. The side panel notes a fantastic adventure board game, new maps and miniatures, a sticker on it displays 25 real. Nonsense for anemic beano clouds. Shopkeep, what board games do you have here? Wonderful board games, sir. The Viticulturist is a classic for sure. Or perhaps you'd like Archipelagos of Insulinda, a very educational game for those interested in geography. Raubritta is a fun game of economic competition, but can get quite intense after a while. We have games for the whole family, you can play with your children. Who are you going to play board games with? Do you have friends or family? Uh, wow, well, I have children, a family. It certainly feels like whatever you are will die with you. Okay, um, look at me. Uh, who'd want to have children with me? I don't feel as if I have any kids. Yes, kids, friends, chicks. I have all those. Sure, let's lie to ourselves. Then you're a lucky man, officer. Children are the mm -hmm. greatest of treasures. She fiddles with her pendant thinking. For playing with friends, I'd recommend Suzerainity. It's a civilization building game where you build a civilization, then set off to brutally colonize and repress other civilizations. It'll cost 12 real. We should get that as well, eventually, but we're not in a hurry. 
money will come sooner or later. I mean, we, we do get money for uh, for capitalist answers, so that might help uh, smooth that over. Uh, so what about uh, so what about all these virile things? Lousy auras there. No, role playing games are popular among those types. You know, who are into those kind of things. Personally, I don't like it. Not at all. I've heard they turn people into occult enthusiasts. That they have rituals where they try to summon entities. Highly immoral stuff. You can still buy them, though. She looks at the table, crossing her arms. Okay, then. That's that for the, uh, for the board games. What's back there? Uh, the books collect uh, the book collects the national uh, recipes of Arda. They are all about lake trout Okay, then Let's take a look upstairs. What do we have here? These shelves are overburdened with books from the same series. You see the name Dick Mullen over and over Look through the display of books crime fiction is a disgrace an asinine misrepresentation of the physical attributes of the arduous everyday work of actual police officers. These books greatly overstate the excitement of police work, glossing over how long it takes to actually follow up on leads and eliminate dead ends. Furthermore, they have no idea how hard it is to simply remove a body from a tree. Yeah, yeah. What's more, they completely ignore the psychological hardships of year after year coming into contact with people during the worst days of their lives. Not a single mention of all the stress this work creates upon the officer's family. Detective fiction just doesn't tell the truth at all. Now, would you like a list of all the books found on the shelf? Sure thing, bud. You see, Dick Mullen on the job. Get Me Mullen. The stalwart adventures of Richard P. Mullen. Dick Mullen and the Murder in the Orchard. The sordid affair of Dick Mullen. A killing is declared. Dick Mullen in the Murder House. The final case of Dick Mullen. An obvious lie. Dick Mullen in the Clock Tower. The ordeals of Dick Mullen. Dauntless Dick. Dick Mullen's funeral pyre. The murder of Dick Mullen. Dick Mullen dies? Oh no. Turns out he faked it to solve a case. Are there any more? Yes. There's also the dame who did it. Farewell, my Mullen. Faking death seems to be a common trope in the Mullen series. The morbid tales of Dick Mullen. A dark tide turns. Tragedy calls for Dick Mullen. Another one with fake death. And, of course, Dick Mullen, the murderer. In order to catch a murderer, Dick Mullen must become the murderer. After all this, you still haven't found the answer to the one question that matters. Who is Dick Mullen? Well, let's give it a shot. One, uh... Your attempt to grasp at the answer fails. Oh, great. It seems very close by. Pulsating just out of reach. Well, damn. Okay, so that was a uh, snake eyes. Great stuff. Uh, shopkeep, what's all this crime fiction? Oh, crime, robberies, murders, even sexual crimes. We're fortunate to have Dick Mullen and his stories to sort <coughs> all that out. You're a, a police officer, apparently. You should buy all of these. They really do teach a person how to be a proper detective. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Uh, okay, what do we have up here? It's a tome of fascist magic, rather candid. And this one, a quaint picture book brochure, very colorful. Yes? Oh, didn't mean to talk to you right now. Let's uh, interact with this book. A sulfur-crested cockatoo sits on the cover, its beak slightly open. It looks as if the bird is calling out the book title. From A to Zurich. A guide to a well-behaved cockatoo. Let's flip through the pages. Turns out that there are so many different cockatoo species, and they all have behavioral problems. What about this guide to cockatoo, storekeep? It's a must-have if you own a cockatoo. I've heard they're quite capricious. Um, let's try it. 
Let's try to steal it. You wait for the storekeeper to be distracted. When she's not looking, you haul the tome of cockatoos into your pocket. There we go. It's quite a challenge, but eventually, the guide to the cockatoos is yours. Splendid effort. There we go. That's better. The plaque on the shelf reads, Biographies of Famous People. You see a large variety of names, none of which ring a bell. Let's look through the display of books. Browsing through all the books with all their names makes your head spin. None of these seem important or relevant. It's all just vapid egoism. Suddenly, a particularly odd title catches your eye. It reads, High Speed Love, the tragic true love story of Jacob Irv and Alfie Delatraz by one Cecilia Averbrook. What's it about? High Speed Love chronicles the romance between two of the finest tip-top tournay racers in history. One of them is the madcap driver, Jacob Irv. His blonde mane graces the cover. Next to Irv's life story, you see a slim biography of an Occidental rock star called The Anti-Star. He's famous for shooting morphine into one of his eyeballs and cocaine into the other. Next to that, River Sholian radio personality Guillaume Bevy stands in front of a rundown drug den. He's a permanent fixture on Channel 8, reporting on real life crime and ruining cops' days. I really must insist you buy one of the books. Reading them is not for free. Do still browse, though, but not too long. She understands she has erred against the customer and immediately corrects course. <laughs> I'm sorry, I did not mean to rush you. You are browsing. Go ahead. Take your time. Time is commerce. Yeah, yeah, plaisance. Uh, tell me about... Well, anything of note in this shelf. I would say... Mm, the Greatest Innocence. Yes, most certainly. <clears throat> it's an important educational tool delving into the depths of history, religion, and their relation to innocentic power. Who or what is an innocent? A very influential historical figure. But surely I don't have to tell you that. You're a law officer, and law officers have at least some education. Well, you'd be wrong about that one. The book is also very daring. The author aims to re-examine the universal understandings of the innocentic system, creating a fresh vantage point and a shift in the tired order of things. I thought it was about which of these innocences is the coolest and greatest, so you recommend it? Great, I don't need to know anymore. Uh, let's go with the first one here. Perhaps for a layman, deep analysis is necessary to peel back the multi-layered meanings. So you recommend it? Certainly. It's prudent for a person to have at least an elementary understanding of history and society. Imagine the chaos we'd be in otherwise. You feel like you should get this one. Definitely. It's important somehow. There's something personal inside. Okay, let's go for it. Let's a buy it. Cultural touchstone. Enjoy the read. Just because I know that. <laughs> well, we'll see later. Um, let's go to see what this is. Another boring book. Just discard it here. Uh, let's take a look into this thing. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. There's also a wide range of paranatural literature. Let's look through the shelf. Amidst the various books, you find one written by someone named Matthias W. Dundas. It's about wholeness, unity, balance. The point of the book, and many others on this shelf, is to give people medicinal advice in situations where they don't have access to paid health services. How does that work? It serves platitudes while also telling everyone that traditional medicine, the kind people don't have access to, and which costs more than this book, is garbage, and would only give you cancer anyway, without even curing your cold or anything. Wholeness, unity, balance, on the other hand, can basically take care of anything. Though it is important to note, when it's up to your mind to heal yourself, then it's because of your mind that you're ill in the first place. Great. We definitely need more of that stuff. It's your own fault if you're ill. Got it? Great. Endurance, of course, immediately on board, I suppose. 
Um, does the book say anything else? The book features chapters on topics such as how to find magnesium. It even lists plants you can harvest magnesium from. How to continue drinking if you're an alcoholic who has destroyed his liver. And there's even a chapter on the ancient Serais tradition of using duck gallbladder preservatives to treat and prevent sexually transmitted diseases. Pre and post factum apply. Nothing worth buying. Just wonderful. This is just mundane garbage. What's even paranormal about this? Okay, uh, find something truly otherworldly. Let's try it. 92% chance. I'll take it. The throbbing in your head increases with every passing moment you gaze at this shelf. Suddenly, as if out of nowhere, a small green book becomes apparent. The title of it reads, Medicinal Purposes of the Pale. What's the pale? The book contains very little explanation on the matter. This knowledge seems to be taken for granted. What's this book about? The book contains descriptions of various pseudo-scientific therapies, alternative medicines, and folk remedies involving the pale, also known as le territoire. For example, it recommends vigorously swatting one's naked body with a venic or hand broom, made from the leafy twigs of a young birch tree from the near pale. Even better if you can find someone else, preferably a large man dressed in nothing but a towel, to thrash you while you're spread naked and helpless on a cool slab. Okay, sure thing, pain threshold. Um, that sounds invigorating, I guess. It is, and good for the circulation, too. Uh, what else? It also recommends consuming distilled spirits, like vodka or whiskey, that have been aged in the pail. Readers are instructed to cover these jars in a shallow hole just inside the pail and leave them there for 30 to 60 days, depending on the potency desired. And what does this pale aged liquor do? Uh, what does it do? What does it do? Among other benefits, it is alleged to restore a damaged liver to perfect health. I should probably get my hands on some of that. What else is in there? For general health and well being, Readers are encouraged to take regular strolls through the pal. Though a sidebar cautions readers to limit each stroll to less than an hour. These strolls promise to cleanse the mind of worries and the body of toxins, especially if the perambulator performs this ritual in the nude. Nudity figures prominently in a number of these prescriptions. This is exactly what you need. I don't know. I don't want to be the party pooper, but this pale territory sounds sort of dangerous. Maybe you shouldn't walk in it naked. For once, Half-Light, you know, I agree with you, Half-Light. It's rare, but this time, this time I do. Uh, huh, anything else of note? There's an entire section devoted to cures for men who are struggling to perform their marital obligations. Well, I certainly don't need that. I probably need that. Um... Let's go with two here. I mean, this guy is in bad shape, so I'm just going to assume he has every problem. Excuse me, sir. I believe you've been perusing that particular volume long enough. Mm. If you'd like to continue reading, I must insist you buy it. What books are these? Hum, sir, please, no browsing in that shelf. That wisdom is not for free. I can't have you end up like opening a police store next door and stealing my customers. Oh no! A police store. Okay, sure, sure, definite. Yeah, okay. Whatever you say. Um, I might buy that later, but not right now. I want to keep my money relatively high for now. But later, later, I'm probably gonna buy it. 